OBS just decided it was done streaming. Then we should like die. Is it good now or? I no, I it just literally turned oh, off. Ah, the there stream. we go. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, we're on, yeah. We're on. OBS literally just was like, "Stop streaming, okay?" And I was like, "I didn't hit that button." But here we are. Sorry about that, guys. Little wonky technical difficulties, but we are back. And let's see here. If my boy, Geo, my boy John, this three is in there. This next one's. This next one's for you. Uh, Pro Draft, the new link is in the chat. Yep, I am in. Oh, if you could tell them we are R, we are good to go. Yeah, we have told them. We are ready. We are hyped. I just have to wait for this ad to go by, but Geo, again, this is for you. With that, with that, honestly, that, that win for TBC is pretty huge because now uh, Potatoes on Rail needs at least one win later tonight because if they get 0-2, they drop down uh, to second place. Oh, also, thank you, Violet Sosu Cat. Happy birthday to Elliot. I don't know how old he is today, but it's pretty hype. <clears throat> That's why this game is so early today, because... Oops. We wanted... Because we wanted to allow him to celebrate his birthday with his boys this evening... Boys and girls this evening. All right, now let's see if Lig Blabby's Ligma can get themselves a W for our boy Elliot, or if TBC is going to get that 2-0 and um, put themselves in a situation where they either get first or get in a tiebreaker with potatoes aren't real. Yeah, uh, same band so far. Oh, but the Lucian band coming out. I don't know if the Lucian itself is honestly worth banning. Mm -hmm. I don't think, like, Lucian as a champion was the reason they were losing. Honestly, again, like I said, first game, ban Orn, pick up Scion, or ban Scion, pick up Orn. But, I mean, I was they Ligma was very much in a position where they could have won that last game without, with while letting Uncle Jemima on that Orn. So we'll see what the adjustments here are going to be. Maybe put Bear on a more straightforward carry. Yeah, the the Zillion. I mean, he had one really good fight with the Baron, but that was a lot of like a whole like team thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think he needs to be put on a gear, <clears throat> as opposed to more supportive mid laner, because he could have been much much more impactful on that Zillion. And they pick Morgana for Biscuit Hat. All right, all right. Also, a uh, quick shout out to Mr. Buttersworth for getting the MVP for last game with four votes. Yeah, the Morgana is definitely a smart pick. Um, while I do think that the Lucian ban could have been something other than the Morgana, they are smart to not ban it and then pick it up for themselves. <coughs> and then the Braum pick coming out. I don't know how much I like Braum into Morgana, although I guess the Morgana could always be going into the mid lane. We don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. They could go for their sixth Kais pick, and there it is. Another Kaisa pick, another aggressive. But that's for the support. Breakfast Club, dude. Oh, oh my God! I'm blind. You are correct. Um, Chad Pittman has to play a different AD carry for the first time in three weeks. He is literally even in solo queue. Always played his Kaisa. Mm. That's a lie, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, and there's the Malphite. They want to get Iryuan on that engage. Give him his Malphite, baby. Hmm. This does lead in J4 for Labby. So we're going to see... I uh, apologize. I'm back in just 30 seconds. All righty. So it's going to give Labby a little bit more CC and peel for these team fights. We'll see what ADC they pick up here in the second rotation for uh, Labby's Ligma here. But right now... Is top going to be picked here? Indeed it is, and there's the Orn. Don't want him to get banned off of those two picks. <clears throat> All right. 
Alrighty, and there's the Aurelia ban. Don't want to see Bears Aurelia. I would imagine another Bear ban here. We'll see if these are going to be going towards uh, Violet Sociocat or directed at Fudgy Ditters. I would honestly see if we uh, like to see some bans on Count Fudgula. Don't let him get that Zen Chow. Um, he might opt in for Warwick at that point once again. Uh, they don't want to deal with Shogath, understandable. Um, but I would very... But uh, banning on Alley here is also a good thing. However, she has shown that she can very much play the R. R I'm back. My mother called me. My bad. Why didn't you say hi to her for me? Sorry. My, my bad. Now, I, now, I'm a, now I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. You are. Yeah. Oh, the arm pick for TBC. Uh, sticking with the strong pick that they already had. Ooh, they do ban the Ari, so... They're saying we want your Kale again, Violet Sociocat. However, yeah, with the Kaisa pick, Kale is definitely yeah, not I, the worst. This is almost guaranteed as in Zhao Kale here for the Breakfast Club. Oh yeah. Like definitely. Blue Side has counter pick right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm, we're about to see if them or where the Morgana is actually going. And what Chap Himmen is looking to finally pick. Sivir. Going not, for the wave clear on the team. Right. Well, they do need wave clear in this composition, so we're going to see what they put on Bear that opens up Bear a little bit for maybe an assassin pick here? This is going to be huge here to see how this composition plays out. It, do we see the Karthus? Do we see the Karthus? Ooh, I would love the Karthus. I love me some Karthus. I don't know if it fits here, but I know Bear plays it. Dude. It's oh, a more goddamn big, boys! He's... <laughs> I, I don't I just don't love the team comp so much that they're putting a lot of the carry pre potential off of uh, Chad Penguin and not really putting it back onto anyone else. Yeah, I mean there's the um, 500 CS win condition, dude. Have you never heard of that one? That is true. Late game Sivir is a beast, but I don't know. I I'm not loving what they've picked so far. It's a it lot of a hard engagement, not much to follow up. And the Corky pick for Violet Sociocat, actually. Oh, actually, that fits them so well. Wait a minute. That actually fits them very well because of the roaming of that package ultimate. Yeah, also uh, offers some mobility against the Jarvan ult. They're able to hop out of it because if they pick the Kale, the Jarvan could trap the Kale into the, um, into the Cataclysm so easily. Mm -hmm. So having a, a little bit more mobility on the mid laner is definitely a huge positive. Especially, I mean, looking at the Breakfast Club, they only have um, Braum and Corky as champs that can actually, like, realistically escape the uh, the Jarvan ult. So, I mean, uh, Labby Zygma is definitely going to be looking for some huge picks with the Jarvan, Malphite, Leona combination. If Morgana okay. can get a good can I, can I make out. a request? I know people don't have to stick on their same roles this season, which is awesome. That's pretty cool. But please, line up in LCS order as best you can. I mean, if you're like, all right, we're going to definitely swap. Our jungle's going to actually play top, yada, yada. That's fine. But if, like, your main lineup is a certain order, please line up that way because I can't use my shortcuts to switch camera to where I want to in-game. We, we were actually told that we are no longer required to be where we need to be. Oh, no, I, I understand. I get that. But it's, like, it's a personal request from me. <laughs> Because, e e I understand that, it's because even though, like, I could switch them all around, I, like, Q should be red side top laner. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. But Q's now Violet Sociocat, it changes every game! Hey, it's totally fine to switch, like, if it's like, alright, you know, yeah, we're lined up like this, but Bear's actually going support. But normally Bear's going mid. <laughs> Just for my own sanity, because direct to camera is horrible. <laughs> On that note, I have to go to the restroom, so I'm going to abandon you for a second here, Rafal. Don't oh, let the I stream go devolve into degeneracy, please. Thank you. He'll come back. It'll just be pure anarchy. Yo, who wants to hop in the, uh, in the cast chat? Stream uh, cast with me right now. Syracuse would have no idea. Um, all, are, all are welcome for about 30 seconds.
Um, what what is going on uh, with picks right now? Anything interesting? Labby's Ligma currently picking uh, four champions that kind of match a similar color scheme with the Jarvan Malphite, Sivir, and Leona. Only the Morgana does not match the orange and brown color scheme. So I think they lose because of that, if I gotta be completely honest. Hmm. The Caitlyn ban also coming out, which I missed because I was talking to my wonderful mother. Um, yeah, I don't really know how much I like the Lab is Ligma's team comp. They do, they, they, they can, they can engage really hard, but I just don't know how much damage they can put out once, like, after they engage. I mean, I guess a lot of it is trying to, you know, get picks with the Morgana and then going in on that. So maybe just getting a kill, one kill or two with these uh, huge picks and engages with the Malphite and Jarvan. But in a 5v5 team fight, I think the Breakfast Club definitely has the advantage with a Kaisa and Quirky and a Xin Zhao who can pump out consistent damage uh, much more effectively than uh, Labby's Ligma's right um, looking at the summoner spells, we see that Leona, uh, with Biscuit Hat with Leona, has chosen to take Ignite, while uh, Mr. Buttersworth with Brahma has chosen to take the Exhaust. I think the Exhaust is definitely a smart pick if the Jarvan or uh, Malphite tried to hop in. Uh, you might want to exhaust them just to slow them down a little bit. I mean, the only consistent damage output on the side of Lab uh, Labby's Ligmas right now is also the Sivir, so I think if you exhaust the Sivir, you kind of just win the fight, unless Bear Jr. is like absolutely huge. Um, so the exhaust race is definitely smart, uh, in my opinion. My humble gold opinion. Um, if you think that Labby's Ligmas will win, type hashtag LLW. Uh, if you think that Labby's Ligmas will lose, type hashtag LLL. Labby's Ligmas will take the L if they lose this game. Um, also, uh, basically guaranteeing them th third place uh, in their division because even if the Juice Me family manages to 2 0 today, uh, they were 2 0 by Labby's Ligmas last week, which, as far as I understand, should give them the tiebreaker. FOG win from General Dill. I don't know what that means. Um, at the same time, the Breakfast Club, uh, I mean, the, w the one win is already pretty huge. Basically guarantees them at least second place. Uh, no, definitely guarantees them at least second place in their division. But if they 2-0, that means that Potatoes are real and needs to 2-0 as well this week, uh, to force a tiebreaker for next week. Um, so, the Breakfast Club at least guaranteeing first or second place for themselves right now. I mean, I mean, guaranteeing at least second place. Looking for that uh, first place spot, but at the same time, a lot of that will uh, be hanging on uh, how Potatoes are real forms later today uh, at our match, which is, as far as I remember, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I could be totally wrong on that, but I'm like 90% sure of that. as Sarah Cruz is still in the bathroom, and I don't really know what to talk about anymore. Um, let's see. Let's see what's interesting going on right now. Um, let's see if my college football team is winning right now. Uh, they are currently down 14-17 to against the Missouri State University. That's sad. Missouri State sucks. Um, so I hope everyone else is having a pretty good Saturday. I think this is one of the earliest games I've ever casted, um, largely on part of Rion's birthday. So happy birthday to him. Um, who is that? Is that the one and only? It is! It's Menbun! <laughs> it's not. It's Sarah Cruz. Sorry. Dude, I've been here for like the past three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see Oh my god. <laughs> now been... you get to cast on your own for a while. Dude, I have done so many solo casts. <laughs> like, I wouldn't even be phased. 
Like, a general dill should know about that. Like, I've casted so much in Phoenix League, and a lot of times I'm the only one. Not to say the Phoenix League's bad or anything, it's just like, sometimes you gotta do it to get it casted. <laughs> Game is starting. Bernie. Who is winning the skin game here, in your opinion? I oh. like the Mafia Braum. I actually Ooh. haven't seen him in the game yet. In my opinion... Who wins the skin game? Hmm. Gonna have to say... Neither. Mainly because there's no Poro Rider so 20. So if no one picks Sejuani, they can't win the skin game? Yeah. yeah. Poro Sejuani is actually the reason I have, like... I was, like, top 50 in the world for the amount of Sejuani games I had in se Season 5. Oh, God. <laughs> I love that skin. God, I... Like, okay, okay. New Sejuani's great and all. She's, like, her, it, it can be pretty nutty, but... Man, I miss old Sejuani W, dude. I don't even care about the ult. The ult's like, alright, whatever, I can't wombo. Who cares? Old Sejuani W, I loved it. It damage dealt scaled with your health. It did percent health off the auto reset. Oh, I miss that ability. I feel so... I don't know, it's just it's so weird. Hmm. Ooh. I mean, Zlick was going in with an invade. They have the Morgana. All right, well, Xin Zhao, we'll see them as they curve around here. Good five point from the Breakfast Club. We're going to see what they elect to do here. They do drop a ward there. They're not going to see them advance because of the ward they placed. Oh, they do know where they're at now. They are Junior. so deep. Oh! Ooh, hoo, 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 I felt. Did you feel that? I did. That was close. Did you feel the movement in the forest, dude? Oh, I don't know if they could have gotten a kill, but they probably could have gotten a flash. Uh, I feel like if they themselves hadn't flashed, I don't know how much they could have gotten there. They were so far away. From oh, yeah, no, no. I think they could have gotten Count Fudgeless. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. But it was still, send a message. Yeah, definitely. But did they get any more? Managed to get any wards down? I don't see any blue wards. Figure out where this boy's starting at, guys. Come on now. Anyway, we have a mirrored start here, top side start for both junglers. What should we expect out of this laning phase? Let's start in the top lane, Orn versus Malphite. Orn versus Malphite, I mean, just two big tanks. Uh, Orn with the percent health damage uh, might have a slightly easier time against the Malphite. Malphite's also... Malphite's also what? Really damn tank. Um, I don't know, uh, Malphite definitely runs out of mana a lot easier. Um, yeah. Or, oh, they're, they're, they're calling him out on his nonsense here. Binding oh. going to land true. There's the knockup. Fudgy's going to give away first blood to J4 there. Every game. I said it last game, did I not? You did. You did. You called it. Alrighty, so we'll see if Count Fudgula can recover from this, um, from this here. Good rotations, good call out on the pathing from uh, Labby's Ligma. However, that is going to put a slight um, deficit for both uh, Bear Jr. and Irion. I mean, just a little bit of an XP deficit, I would say, because they had to rotate. Ooh, the Q barely missed. Wait, him. directed yeah. camera decided that was not interesting enough, by the way. <laughs> Where did it take you? Top and then bot. Oh, no. oh is this Labby? Labby? She's on the other side of the lane. Oh. 
He is wasting a lot of time here. If he does not get a kill off of this right now, there, he's going to be in trouble. Oh, the flash fight! He's going to come through! Then Jade with the knockup from Lobby! That's going to be a 2 0 J4. His patience was rewarded. And he's Dang. still going to be tied just barely behind one camp behind of um, Count Fudula here because of that death and forcing him to clear out that bot side. Mm, Labby now 700 gold ahead uh, and able to grab a scuttle crab. Labby's huge, dude. Wait, I don't know if he's. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna look to want to scrap. You're gonna clear this pink ward. Not sure why that's there, but maybe to cover that exact invade. I uh, guess. Alrighty, well, Labby is massively ahead. When he he's gonna clear out his bot side jungle here for sure, and then we're gonna see where he looks to go next once he's back. Most likely top side to get that farm and maybe get a gank onto Orn or Camp Violet Sociocat most likely. So, let's see what happens. Instead, so, let's talk about these other lanes here. Violet Sociocat is now going to have to play a little careful here, but what do we see? Oh, another binding. What do we see is going to happen in this bot lane? Silver Leona against Kaisa Brahm. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of... I mean, it's not... I mean, the Silver Leona is just not a bot lane that I really see. I don't know if I really, how often I really match a Silver with like a Leona. I mean, Silver is is able to put out a deceptively large amount of damage if she's able to hit the Q, um, get some damage in early. Uh, if someone gets caught by the Leona, I feel but like. I think, but I think I... that the the Kaisa Brahm just synergize so well together. Yeah, we do see Labby in the spot side jungle looking for Zin. Um, getting some deep wards down. They know that is going to be top as he finishes off that scuttle. Um, something to think about, though. I don't think that's necessarily the most kill-tacular lane. Like, if that's a lane that feels like... Oh, there's the gang coming in from Count Fudgel. Bear Jr. Might, does not have Flash available. Ooh. Does he have enough for a Root? No, he does not. If he had Root available... Oh, there. my gosh. And Irion is going to potentially fall here as Labby gets himself a kill in the mid lane. Is he going to go for two here? He doesn't have enough mana. He's looking for that red buff to slow Ooh. him down. Nope, he's going to back off. And the top lane, Uncle Jemai, we got to get a solo kill on Irion. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was another okay. thing I was going to say. I feel like Orin would win that because he does way more percent health damage with that W. Oh, for sure. So this game's going to be a little bit on Labby here as Bear yeah, Jr. Yeah, Irion is... having a really rough time, um, and we know how strong that Orin can be, especially in the hands of Uncle Jemima in these team fights. Mm-hmm. Um, Labby's Labby. absolutely huge. Labby hasn't recalled yet. Yeah, I mean, he wants to get that topside farm. I would bet, let's look here at the gold here. Yeah, he's looking to, he'll have a massive... gold up on Count Fudgela. Yeah, yeah, he's going to have a massive back, depending on whether he goes Cinder Hulk. I don't think, or, oh man, turning on a Biscuit Hat here, the stun does land, but uh, this, he does use Aftershock very effectively. See, again, it, like this feels like this is a lane that's going to fight on Leona Sivers' terms. Whether or not they win that fight... Who knows, but Leona Siver gets to decide when we fight. Hmm. But um, on the side of uh, the J4 OBC here, if he's going to go like Warrior or Cinder Hulk. Yep, Warrior. He's 3 0. They have a tank in the top lane. Marshall uh, Cadence buff. Oh. Mia's coming out. Uh, question mark's oh. coming out from Uncle Jemima as Irion is sitting in the jungle. Oh. Looking at they're, they're going, the binding pattern. does not land, and he does not have flash. Oh, he's no. Like, here, oh, there's the. Here comes. Oh, he's in rage! Ah, he's gonna go. Oh, oh, the way for the way for the way. Oh, here it is! Boom! Bam! Pop! He's done. She's gone. Oh, meanwhile, bot lane four man. The bot lane Orn teleports in. Here comes the teleport from the Malphite. Knock, knock, knock up does not connect. That's a good stun. Uncle oh, Jemima's trapped in her tower. He's taking so many shots. What an ultimate three man hold from the Morgana here. Bear Jr. gonna stun up the Brom. They're all so low, but none have fallen yet. Biscuit out looking for one more Zenith blade. Does not get it. Woo, I was close there. That exhaust coming in super clutch for Mr. Buttersworth. Oh, the binding's gonna land! Ooh. On a razor's edge down here a little bit. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Labby and Irion, they want this first tower here. They're gonna look for this. Well, those cats here, he could poke, she could easily poke them off. And indeed, she they understand that and walk away. Especially with two big ones lot online. Woo! Yeah. Recall's finally coming out uh, from the blue side bot lane. Oh? Yeah, so we're going to see what this first back. Kind of messing around with that jungle. But still, 
Good teleport from Bear Jr. They didn't get any kills, but he definitely m mitigated the dive and forced some sums out of the bot lane where that could have easily been a double. Yeah, so definitely. If that um if that uh exhaust Ooh. hadn't come out, that would have been an absolutely Ooh. huge uh play for Bear Jr. Ooh. Absolutely. And Labby here is ginormous as the binding's gonna keep uh Oh no, he doesn't have EQ available, however, because he used it to get out earlier. Still, Labby here, showing up here in this game too. Three and O, oh, but he has yet to really, you know, he wasn't in that fight bot lane, but they were doing a good job to clear out that mid turret. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen, what this damage is gonna be with this fully upgraded jungle, this fully upgraded item for Labyrinth here. See if he ta where he takes it next. Um, Flash is up now for the Corky. Package is available on Violet Sociocat, however, with the way that his, with the way that um, Breakfast Club plays, that's going to be huge. I definitely expect um, this Corky to headbot any second now. But instead, Orn won this uh, scuttle. Ooh. Oh man, they know he has no egg. Oh, that could have been quite a turn there uh, if they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, I think Valet Sociocat wants to go bot lane as soon as possible. Yeah, just going right in right in the side of Barry Jr., going straight down there. The Sivir just naturally pushes yep. so hard with and that they, W. And they know that J4 is topside. They sense something is up. They're backing off here. Here comes the package. Ooh, Ooh just on the right side with that Sivir ultimate. I cannot remember what it is called. Very good from them. And Corky having to burn on TP to, to say On the hunt. Corky having to burn teleport in order to save the mid tower. Violet Sociocat. Again, they're trying to make these plays across the map, but they are countering them very well on the side of Labby's Ligma. Nice. Again, I want to see Labby. Oh, here it is. Sociocat does have flash. He flashes in himself to try and get the knockup, but Valkyrie's available for Violet Sociocat. I don't know if that's the lane you want to commit flash to, but still glad he's trying to show himself. I would say maybe try and go bot. Yeah, really oh, 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 Uncle oh, Jemima with wow. another solo kill. But first break, gonna go to Morgana. Jumps in, gets the ult on Devout Sociocat, who has no mana. The Valkyrie out. That's a bit of an unnecessary dunk. Yeah, a little, a little overkill there. But uh, you know, I'm I, I'm hypocritical for saying that. I, I sense, I can already feel the messages dropping in my Facebook chat, telling telling me that that's me. <laughs> Uh, from my get from our uh, game one, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> where I definitely uh, stole a couple kills with the J4. Yeah. Got it close. Yeah, Uncle Jemima. Oh needs to... no! I just... oh. Now that they just breakfast club, breakfast club. Sit in the bush, make them face check, beat them out. And that's gonna be. The dragon here for Labby's Ligma, who is currently 3,000, almost 3,000 gold ahead at 11 and a half minutes. Is there a way for Breakfast Club back in? Because I feel like there is one. Yeah, I, I was going to say that Uncle Jamama needs to wait for his ult to come back up and just start going right into these team fights. He is, getting, he is really far ahead of this Malphite right now, but the dragon's getting taken. There's not much he can do yet uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. these team fights that uh, Breakfast Club definitely wants to be looking for. But yep. these picks from Bear Jr. and Labby combined have been crucial to building up this giant lead. Um, Another thing to uh, think about. We haven't really seen Count Fudgeal after that first blood. I mean, I know he died somewhere else. I can't exactly remember where he's, where he's what other fight he's died in, but... I think, I think, he, just gets, uh, he, just, I think he just got caught again uh, in his jungle. But still, yeah, it's like we... we the Xin Zhao was very... It's not like super huge or the reason they won in the last game however he was very important in the early game dropping a lot of pressure across the map and um right now a little bit on the invisible side yeah um 15 uh cs uh down um labyrinth about to recall with almost two and a half thousand gold to his name well i mean this um, yeah i'm not even thinking about the matchup that just are not relevant right now i mean he has not been able to be very successful now, now in Fudgy's defense, kind of at this point, if lanes aren't presenting themselves as gankable... Oh, as we get a pause. Oh. Elliot said he needing pause. We're pausing, by the way. Um, I don't think... I, just, I don't think that's, there's any... You know, just so we can... 
Yeah, apparently, apparently we can't even control much stuff as spectators, so. Yeah, so it was... Oh, they're good now. Yeah, but I feel like there was warning. Yeah, I don't think there's any foul play here, do you? No. Okay. Whew. Now some... Yeah, so that's, that's always... Always want to be careful about that. You don't want, you know, whether it's, you don't, obviously you don't want any foul play, but you also don't want people thinking there could be foul play. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I have no reason to think there's any. Yeah. Yeah. There was warning. Um, but there was also no fights going on. Pretty fair. Yeah, Anyways. Like... So look at this war game battle down here. They know that J4 is here as there's the pink war come out. They're looking to turn on Labby. Labby's just going to, oh, never mind. We have the teleport coming in. Labby. Jumps out. Who's the one TPing in? It is, in fact, Bear Jr. as my... Oh, there's the Binding under the Braum. Ornhorn comes out. Does not land on anyone but the Spell Shielded Chad Penguin. Buttersworth. Oh, good hesitation on... Oh, my goodness. Braum ultimate knockout from Uncle Jemima. They're chasing them down right now. Bear Jr. has to burn his ultimate to keep himself alive. Oh, flash from the kite. So, Corky is here. Violet Sociocab Valkyrie's in. Is going to get turned on here. A knockup onto Uncle Jemima from Labby. Labby's having to walk away with his life. Flash in from Chad Penguin. Otto's about two seconds later. Does forces them to back off here as Count Fedula is now in the fight, having been zoned up from Ariwan. He jumps oh. in, but he's gonna get annihilated. And this tower is 100 percent going to be for Labby's Ligma. Yeah, Count Fedula unfortunately just having a really bad time. Labby's Ligma knowing that when they see someone, they are going to oh! in. Oh, Ariwan! Oh my, my birthday, God! boys! I get to decide who lives and who dies with the delayed ace for Labby's Ligma. 5,000 gold up at 14 minutes. They are in complete control of this game. They're getting any fight that they want. Mm -hmm. what, I do I mean, not know what uh, the Breakfast Club can do right now. I mean, what good presence of mind. Game. Yeah, what good presence of mind from Labby's Ligma. Saw that Violet Sociocat burn the Valkyrie to get in on the backside. And you're just stopping them right there. Now you're going to fight me now. There's the package. He's going to get stunned here. But she's going to get stunned here. But your cat chased away. Going to have to burn her Valkyrie. Oh, I thought she did. does have the real Valkyrie available. But still, presence of mind to turn on the Corky in that fight. And knowing, and then having um, Bear Jr. zoning. I think it was Bear zoning out the rest of the team. Or Bear, uh, as they took out Violet Socio Cat, and then Fudgy Ditters, uh, Count Fudgy will come in at the end, tries to make something happen, but just not enough. 11 and 3, two towers to nothing, and 5.5 thousand gold in the lead for, 5.4 thousand gold in the lead for Flabby's Ligma. Yeah, Rift. Count Fudgy is trying to get the, um, the Rift Herald, trying to get just something in exchange for uh, getting so far behind in these after these team fights. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Ooh. The sniper! Was Valkyrie up? Uh, oh, here comes Sukan Fam. You're three levels under, my friend! Oh my goodness! That damage! But the chase is on! Deep, here it comes! Race it is on! Oh, the Biden just walks away! Oh no! And here they are! Biscuit Hat's gonna chop stun up on Jemima. Oh, gets followed up by the Zenith Blade. There's the Braum Ultimate Glacial Fissure keeping the disengaged and keeping the team alive. Bear Jr. taking him on a bit of a, me a merry jace through the jungle. Bobby's Ligma's in so much control right now as Iron looks to push down this bot lane tower as the four, rest of the four-man squad turn their attention mid-tier two. Yeah, Labby's Ligma was channeling Chad Penguin and just going in on every single fight oh. with, with no fear. Yep. Now something, Labby actually needs to be really careful. He had to, oh man. And I really oh, no. Oh. Flash. oh no. I feel it. Do you feel it? Oh, I feel it. It's it's coming soon. Oh, uh, but they see him. There's the pink ward. I felt it in my loins, dude. It was weird. <laughs> really weird feeling. You know, kind of, kind of scrunchy a little bit. I don't, know, I don't know if I can relate to that. The slight tightness? <laughs> Anyways, here we are. Uncle Jemima has not backed. Uh, oh, Violet Switch Cat has to burn that Valkyrie. Very, that's half health off of something. To be fair, Bear Jr. is now getting a little bit on the low side. Himself, going to try and spell vamp up. Last bit of spell vamp left in the game. 
But it, it feels a little bit like Labby's Ligma is playing like Breakfast Club. Yeah, sticking together. Um, knowing what, knowing where to put people uh, on the map. And they're currently ahead in vision control. So, I mean, they're doing everything that um, the Breakfast Club was able to do to succeed in the last mm -hmm. game. Yep, and... As Inferno Drake's coming up, going to be absolutely huge. And something at item power spike. We need to keep the infamous Corky Triforce spike. 17 minutes in the game, and Corky is still working on Sheen. Yeah, Corky, Corky has about 1,000 gold. Can get the Triforce probably on its next recall, I on think. On her next recall, okay. I think, yeah, sorry, I think she's Ooh, getting it Infernal right Drake now. Infernal Drake being started. Um, bit of lost in rotation here. No ADC available. Labby's going to have to be careful here. You give so much shutdown gold. But he does so much damage! The double knockup! It's a 3v5 here! 3v4! Mr. Buttersworth is next on the plate! The horn doesn't matter! It's a double kill for Labby right now! Make it three! No, Bear Jr. is unstoppable as they take down the top tier two! Woo! Yeah, um, Violet Sociocat having <clears throat> to recall. Finally got her Triforce, but was missing in that team fight, even though she had TP. Her team just kind of got wiped there. And they're going to lose this mid-tier 2. Top tier 2 stays alive, but... A 10,000 gold lead at 18 minutes. I mean, I, I I really just do not know what um, the Breakfast Club can do right now to come back. I honestly don't know. Man, I mean, just maybe try and farm up and... Get some picks with the package and Braum and Ornhorn. Like they have a lot of global pressure, but I mean their highest level is Violet Sociocat at eleven, but everyone else just now starting to get to ten and nine, so my point isn't as relevant. Yeah. I mean I, I think they're just praying that the game can go longer and longer, but with the aggression that Lab Ligmas has been displaying, with the BF sword in the Jarvan probably building a third item uh G A. Guaranteed a G A. Yeah. After yeah, I that know. cleaver. <clears throat> Not an IE. Um, I mean, I, yeah, but, I'm, but, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for the <laughs> J4IE rush. Yeah, but yeah, but like th they want us to hold this game up but with the aggression that they're playing with. They're, I just don't know what they can do. They, are, they, need, they need to disengage every fight that comes in and just hope mm -hmm. they don't lose the game. Try and kite it out right now. Away. We see Violet Sociocat is bought to match up against Irion. Um, trying to match this 4-1 a little bit here. The Rift Herald was dropped. Um, I can only assume it was just about to go away. Yeah. Oh! Scripts confirmed, not on. <laughs> Very much confirmed, no scripts. You know, isn't Bear Jr. a uh, support main? Uh, I don't know. I think he's a support main. Like, he plays mid in the league, but he's main support on ladders. Well, he, he played uh, top lane last split, so I'm actually not entirely sure what I think he... He's a I think he's a support plays. main in uh, on ladder, isn't he? Holder Nation saying, yeah, he is, normally. Okay, well. I mean, because then that could explain definitely the experience on the Morgana here. Oh, for sure. As well as the Zillion. Mm hmm. But, um, I mean, clearly having a much more comfort and impact on the Morgana than he ever did on the Zillion last game. Yeah. Honestly, with right now, I think Labby's Ligma just needs to go to Baron, get that vision around it, and just start it. What, what are they going to do to you? Like, the moment they show their faces, you just press the R's. Pick someone to die and go. Um, I think that's what they should do right now. Push out mid and start the Baron. Mm. Let's see if they Lapis, do it. Lapis Legends does need to get a little bit more vision control um, in yeah, that Bear the pings right now. Bro. Bear Jr. calling it out as he was the first one to move. Straight to the Baron. Yeah, you have Arion, Arion has his teleport available. Violet Sociocat's team, uh, clearing out that mid lane as now they are on to it a little bit here. Baron already at a quarter health. I'm going to have to turn off this overlay here. Here comes Uncle Jemima. Ooh, Scripps. Need to turn him back on, my friend. All right, Baron half health. Or right now, Malphite is pushing down the bot lane. Wait on, they have a huge top wave, so all they have to do is wait for that to push in and look for the fight that they want. Because all they all it takes is one good engage between this Malphite 
or like between anyone, any bit of their CC hits on their team on the side of Labby's Ligma, someone will die. And this may be it. Uncle Jemima going down to meet up with Iruan down here. Uncle Jemima have to use that E to get out. And they're just going to turn to the bot tower as Violet Sociocat had to answer the top wave. Oh, wait, I learned a new button. That's so nice. Ooh, you press H, it all goes away. Ooh. Let's see. Yeah, try it. Let's see. Can I get this guy out of the way? Ooh, yeah, there we go. That's that's pretty neat. Ooh. Anyways. <clears throat> I, I think the only thing that Labyrinth like must could be doing better right now is just having a little bit better vision control. You can see all the penguins being bought on um, Breakfast Club, but only... Um, Oh, I guess uh, Ariane just bought some pink boards, but uh, up until then it was just Biscuit Hat. Because they, they wanted mm -hmm. to be taking this Baron, but I mean, most of the wards in the area right now are red side. Alrighty, I have to say something. I agree with a lot of Labby's build, because especially because you have that tank already in Malphite. Zerg Greaves, I'm not a big fan of. I definitely think some Tabbies here against yeah, that's a little a Zin, a Corky. Yes, he does AP damage, but still, that's auto attack damage, and a Kaisa. I feel like a um, Tabai would have been a lot better, especially when you're sitting in that Cataclysm with them and scrapping for a little bit. Yeah, he's already so far ahead. I think this is a, the, the Greaves are just a little bit overkill. I mean, he hasn't really been killing people with auto attacks. He's just kind of been jumping in and ult. Yeah, oh yeah, no, no, no. Your, your auto is kind of trying to finish him off, but that first auto with the Martial Cadence is the big one that matters. <clears throat> yeah. You see Arion says, yeah. Yeah. I remember those early levels. <laughs> Alrighty, so game has stalled out a little bit, like you said. They're not. No one's looking for the fight again. Just need to force, go to Baron, force them to meet you there, and then turn. Just bring the Malphite over, even you know. Yeah, the gold lead's still 10k, which is absolutely huge for Labby's Ligmas, but it was 10k four minutes ago. So, oh my goodness, was that one binding that just half helped Count Fudula, <laughs> who is still looking like he's going Sterix gauge next second. Oh, Cloud Drake. Run at him faster, boys! <clears throat> Baby Junior, Junior just kind of sitting on a ward right there. Oh, but the dragon goes their way. Yeah, I mean, not much action for the past five, six minutes, and I mean, that's exactly okay. what the Baby Junior want. thinks he's about to get a nice pick here, but he's sitting with a. Uh, um, Definitely on a ward. With a red trinket and not using it. There we go. He realizes that they know where he is. Alrighty, so. Getting that vision cleared out. Will we see the Baron started finally? J4 isn't back. He's been with that IE for quite a bit of time. <laughs> with that BF sword, sorry. For quite yeah. a bit of time. The IE to B. <laughs> oh, here we go. Squad. Violet Sosukat. Oh, Violet Sosukat does that. Package Fable jumps in on her own, then jumps out. I think it was just for a wave clear, but here's the Ornhorn. Flash from Bear Jr. It gets two people. Oh my goodness, that binding deletes them. The ultimate in that Cataclysm just keeping them in there, and Labby's going to get out. Buttersworth is down. It's currently two for nothing. Bear Jr. presses R along with Iru on, comes on in. 2K fan will fall here very shortly as Uncle Jemima actually falls. Bear Jr. uses the stopwatch to keep himself alive, and Violet Sosukat will fall as well. It is a clean ace. What a dive from Labby's wow, Ligma. I, this is either Baron or game. Yeah, um, the Breakfast Club, unfortunately, just missing the follow-up on these ults that they had last game. The Orn ulted and just did not get nearly as much as he wanted out of that. Um, the team took a little bit too long to follow up on that knockup and just kind of got totally wiped. Really clean team fighting too, uh, with the Zonius at the very end by Bear Jr. Almost dying to that turret. Really, really good plays. Everyone coming out with a sliver of health, but, you know, 5 for 0 at the end of the day. Huge win and a Yep. I don't. Do they do Baron right now, or do they back and then go straight uh, to it? I think they're a bit too low. They probably let the um, Super Indian oh, start. Labby. <laughs> we saw that, Labby. Yeah, but they can just go straight for the Baron right now and just push for the win. Yep. Alrighty. Oh, wait. It's actually an Essence Reaver on Garen. What the hell? Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, they, I mean, they're they're ahead, but that doesn't mean that buying essence reavers. Uh, 
That's a <laughs> okay. Well, let's see That's how it goes. Let's, let's re. Let's make sure we know what it does here. I'm a little. Is there something? Let's see here. I love. I, I love it. Is, he, is Penguin truly the Chad one on the team at this point? All right, fun admit mana. Okay. Nessence flare. Okay, he wants to ult in and just. Oh no. Oh goodbye. Yep. <laughs> you did. I think he just wants to press R and then just bop him for a few seconds. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. Baron's getting taken. It should be over. Who said Garen? Did any of us say the word Garen? Did I say Garen? Did I, did I say Garen? I don't think I said Garen. Who said Garen? Did I, did I say Garen instead of Jarvan at some point? So, oh, was I'm I trying to say? Did I say Garen instead of Irion? <laughs> oh, here he comes. Get him in a clock. Oh, I was actually almost a steal off of that. Um, Bear Jr. gonna get caught out a little bit here, but he does get those. Oh, there's the Wombo once again! Use that Essence Reaper, boy! <laughs> As they get the double kill, and they're just gonna end it here with that Baron. I Attack. said it! Attack speed Jarvan, common in clutch. Actually, I, th I think Dude. I said it. Oh, okay. Still, whoo! What a game from Labby's Ligma here. Here comes the teleport in. This is gonna be is this either gonna be the most legendary three man stand of all time or this is it? You have to do something, but Ooh. Count Fungel goes Ooh. in, gonna oh. get deleted. Uh Violet Sociocat running away for dear life. Get it Oh He's scripting! The script's been turned on. Look at that, he's scripting that R button. So dang good. And I mean that's it. One one! Potatoes aren't real, just have to win both their games tonight in their first place, but Labby's Ligma going to... What does this actually do to the standings? Um... Are they second or third? I, I think Labby's Ligma is... I think this is a tiebreaker. Well, no, because Breakfast Club is 4-2, four and, uh, four and, and Labby's Ligma is 3-3 three and three now. Did they not win against... Um... Did they not win both games against Juice Me? They, they did. Oh, but... potatoes are... Yeah, yeah, okay. Still. Yeah, no, but potatoes... Uh, it, it does mean that Breakfast Club is relying on Potatoes Aren't Real to go 0-2 against Juice Me Family in order to get first place. In the yeah, team. but still. GG's. Labby's Ligma recovering after that first game for a game that really didn't matter in the long run for placements, but, you know, wanting to show, hey... Fixed our mistakes from that first game. We can take this game two here. And, I mean, Labby, Taxby Jarvin, 11-0-12. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be biased and say give the jungler the MVP, but Bear Jr. set up so much early with those bindings. Well, they're not real, so it doesn't matter. There we go. Screen is black. Yeah. So, I am I mean, as a jungler, I will biasly say Labby was MVP there, but Bear set up so dang much that game. Yeah. I mean, Labby did have 23 kill participation out of tw 27, which is nuts. I mean, straight but, at the bat, getting that pick on... I mean, I mean you know, I guess you know who else on, has 23 uh, kill participation? Oh, Bear it Jr. is 23. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know who has zero deaths? <laughs> yeah, he didn't give him a thousand gold real quick by dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still, what a game, too. Um, I mean, it started off calling out Count Fudgula's early pathing uh, with that collapse in River. And then just from there, the gank mid, the repeat gank mid. Like, could you imagine how this game would have gone if Labby just sitting there for like a full minute waiting for the right waiting for bear jr to flash bind violet socio cat because by doing that he would have effectively given the tempo back to the zit the zin like his would have been able to catch up a little bit quicker against the j4 because of how yeah. long he waited there it's a good point i'm not saying labby was inconsequential do That's not cool. get me wrong oh no there were quite a few fights like that turn on the Corky and that bot lane fight actually won them that fight. They, I, it would have been a lot closer. Maybe more people would have died, but because they turned that ultimate kept Violet Sociocat right there where everyone could DPS them. Oh, that was so nice. Still, what a game. What a series. 1-1. One, one. Congratulations to both teams.
This is the yeah. interview time, isn't it? I forget what uh, the yeah, interview we'll is here. We'll give it about one more minute for the MVP poll. Labby is currently winning with four votes to three on Bear Jr. Uh, get your votes. And we have 17 viewers. I know we can't have only seven votes. I know I'm getting in. I'm going to place my vote. I'll have 30 more seconds. Ooh, it's 4-4. Four, four. And my phone died. Wait, I don't have the Twitch stream opened on my computer. Link it to me in Discord. Do it now, 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 now. What, the poll? Yeah, I don't... I don't... Uh... Oh, so you're gonna have to read Twitch chat for me because my way of reading Twitch chat is dead. Oh, you're good. The the poll is five to five. It's 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 tight. Someone needs to break this tie. Is it there me? are still less votes than we have viewers. Is it me? It could be. Am I am I the tiebreaker? Is this my moment? Do I get to determine? Who is the MVP here? Votes do... for votes for Chapman. <laughs> votes I... for neither. Votes for neither of them. I vote for Irion, dude. For his birthday. I mean, I'm down to declare them co-MVPs. You know. I Thoughts? suppose. Well, we're still at five to five votes. <clears throat> um, but I guess for now, we will move up to the MVP uh, channel <clears throat> with the captains of both teams. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I guess Labby, Baird Jr., and uh, Mr. Buttersworth, the MVP of Game 1. So we'll see you there. Yeah. Here. All right. It's time. I'm going to place my vote. I will break this tie. Are you ready? All right. Give it to oh. the boy on his birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> Give it to him on his birthday, dude. The, the real MVP, Irion. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move to the MVP chat. Captains and MVPs, please join us there. All righty. Hello. 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 Am I supposed uh, to be here? Yeah, it's co-MVPs, yeah, yeah. dude. Oh shit. And I'm captain, it's, so it's I'm straight, be here anyway. It's straight at five to five, so like, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you. you All right, we're just waiting to on uh, you guys if he if he gives me any shit. Honestly, we the only person we're gonna get from the other team is uh, Tizia Boy, who got MVP, is the captain, and got MVP of game one. What's up, yo? Hey. Hello, hello. Has... Good game, sir. Good games. Mm. GG. Yeah, Thanks for being well super flexible about the schedule, too. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Mm. Nah, dude, we had to get Elliot out drinking. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I was... uh, <laughs> but I appreciate all it. All right, all right. So we're going to now open up questions to Twitch chats. Um, Hodor Nations asks both captains. Hello. Sorry. Hello? What are y'all's responses? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> all righty all right so game one just uh tizia buttersworth when the when labby's ligma took baron uh got the baron steel what was going well got the fight at baron oh, actually what was what were you going what were comms like what was the plan uh it was it was mostly you know what it's okay we took a poor fight like it it might have been a good fight had we responded to what they were doing sooner, and we just responded late, and we just pooped up and let them, you know, fight us. I got perma so I couldn't do much that fight. Uh, but we regrouped, talked about what we wanted to do, and we took it from there. Awesome. Uh, do you have a question, Rafal? Um, were you... The Jarvan build, how much of that was like, I'm really ahead? And how much of that was like, you are going to, 
you were how much of that was from mobile fire how much of it was uh essence reeves and uh how much of that was from mobile fire essence reeves berserkers reeves zero zero from mobile fire i'll say first of all zero from mobile good fire, good no, no no i and love that i love that you're like no nah, this is my build we're doing i love it yeah well and also bear can attest to the fact that this morning maybe at like 7 a.m or 8 a.m or something like that i sent him a message on facebook and i was like Check out this Jarvan build I've been doing, and it was Essence Reaver with the Berserker's Greaves, and I was like, the same exact thing happened. I just was like 11 kills, zero deaths, and um, so yeah, it was definitely a build that I like wanted to go with. It wasn't just like, oh, hey, I, her, I her, like dude. that, I like it. Yeah, well, because the Essence Reaver, obviously, you, you get hey. the uh, passive. Well, um, yeah, uh, the only other like, the only other item you could probably go that's maybe can better or equal to it is black cleaver but i mean i already had black cleaver but yeah if you already had well, it you like... saw the bf sword and just assumed it was a ga yeah yeah well that's where i used to go and then i started doing this essence river where you get the mana back and you get um uh the r passive or whatever when you do your ultimate you gain like attack mm -hmm. speed and stuff and they're stuck in there with you so i get off like three autos really quick do you get do you get mana from that item yeah, you get mana as well when you auto attack. Speaking That's good for of, Jarvan gets oom a lot. Yeah, speaking of interesting builds off of BF Sword, your ADC, uh, Buttersworth, went IE second in game one. What were the? Do you know the thoughts for that one? Uh, well, okay, so we brought it up after, after the game, and his response was, "You know what? I built it, and like I had, I had a crit item next back, so." I, I don't know. I, I don't know why he went IE second. Honestly. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, quick question for um, and uh, for blah, 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 Labby. I saw you guys right after you got that blue buff immediately collapsed onto Count Fudgula. What was going on with that? Was that intentional? What was that uh, talked about before the game? Did you spot him on it? What was going on there? At which point are you talking about? You mean like game two? Yeah, like level yeah. like the level two kill you got on uh, yeah on Zen. Oh, when I bound him. Yeah. Yeah, Labby spotted him on a ward that he left over by his scuttle, and then Fudge. I think Count Fudgula was just kind of oh, eyeing no. out the he was eyeing out the situation as Labby was like calling us over to collapse. So he was kind of just waiting there as we're as Orn and Morgana are rotating over to him. Well, he and came he, to check the crab. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He came to check the crab because he knows. I mean, Fudgy is somebody that I played with, like, on the team last split, and he knows that I am like value those incredibly highly. And both games, I noticed he went to the crab on the jungle side that I started and played uh, a champion that can actually like dual me with those crabs. So yeah, I think that's good, that anticip good anticipation by Lavi, honestly, there. And then yeah. Kyle Fudgele right. just stayed, he stayed a little bit too long and that was it. Yeah. But he was like it, checking it wasn't that big of a mistake. Yeah. He just got hit by a max range bind from out of vision. So it's... All right. Really... Now we have a couple of chat questions. I wish these would... Um, we, need some, we need some chat questions for uh, Breakfast Club because they played a really strong game mm -hmm. one. Um, but question for Lavi's Ligma. What's it like to finally win a game without using Kaisa? Um, it's pretty Chad. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then I mean, there, when did you turn on the scripts? Um, shh. Don't tell people. That's how I got my other accounts banned. Secrets. Secrets. But um, no, um, I just throw them in random directions and hope people flash into my binds. <laughs> we, were, we were pretty confident that they were going to pick the Kaisa that second game uh, when we banned Lucian. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of like Opie's, Opie's chain, in my opinion, would be that Lucian, then the Kaisa, and then uh tristana below that so we were saying it would be either because of tristana and then when we saw the second round come around we just like yeah they're gonna go ahead and grab this uh i do gotta go but it was it was a pleasure y'all yeah. all right it was good james we need some questions for um Peace, mr buttersworth here um let's think back what what was y'all's game plan going into game two after you know it was a strong early game and some good rotational play but almost losing it there in game one what was the what was the game plan going into game two uh, our game plan. Uh, yeah. Usually, if we win game one, we want to go in with a similar game plan. Gotcha. We saw the Morgana first pick, and I said, "Nah, I'm not taking Rakan into that." Um, so we picked up the Braum, uh, hoping to you know shield the backline a little bit, but they just had so many ways to get in there. J four, 
and the Malphite that it basically, and from a support standpoint, it put me at a, at a huge disadvantage. And with a couple misplays early, letting the, well, basically they just got ahead and then just grouped up and potted us. <laughs> like, it, it's just a bunch of misplays early. Alrighty. Um, do you have any questions, Rafal? Um, not in particular. I think uh, good games for both teams. Oh right. yeah, I see. I see. Jaundice and Chad Vision. That's how. Yeah, they were very good at choking us out of Vision from our own jungle. Uh, they went for. They had both tier two towers, and they're going for one. And we just had no Vision in our jungle whatsoever. Uh, we were basically pushed into base. Oh, Vision after Scuttle incident. Yeah. Both times also, I think that the jungle matchup, I think that there was a better jungler to pick game two specifically. Because game one, it, was, it wasn't like that impactful overall. I think the Zen, like is just not in like the best spot right now. Um, and it's kind of hard to play that into Lee Sin and Jarvan, which like do the same thing that Zen wants to do, uh, which is like be aggressive in the early game. Right. Yeah. And I don't know. I think a lot of our picks could have went better. Uh, game two, I think we lost in the in pick ban though, um, and that's not to discredit our picks. I think our picks were very good. I they they just took it and ran. Uh, back to game one. Um, when you saw that teleport coming, the when the, the scrapper on that infernal Drake, they kept when they kept aggroing. What was going on in your team comms, uh, Tizzy boy? Okay, so we had Ali uh, top lane. I think that she died uh, actually to Elliot, and we were like, "Well, we still want to contest this Baron," so we just played around it. We knew we still had the gold lead. Um, we knew we could possibly take the four v four, but they want to chance it. So we waited for Ali to get back up. She uh, used the TP, and by then, I believe all four of our members who were uh, the Dragon Pit had their own pop the Ornalt. Mm -hmm. And uh, pop the Recon alt and basically uh, wiped them. I, I think we were a lot farther ahead than we thought we were. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it. Congratulations to both teams. GG's on a couple yeah, of great, great games. Game. Great game. That was a fun one, both oh, yeah. games, for sure. Super fun, man. One, yeah, one. <laughs> and again, thanks for being so accommodating. Thank you, casters. Thanks, uh, everybody who watched. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Don't forget to catch at 10 Eastern. Super duper late. Uh, potatoes aren't real versus juice me family potatoes aren't real with the chance to take that number one seed out of the Badwick division? I believe so. <laughs> the same division that you just saw here. <laughs> if they, they 2 0 today, they guarantee first place. If they 1 1, they guarantee a tiebreaker. And if they 0 2, they get second. So big game tonight. Yeah, it's going to be huge. You'll see me there too on uh, color casting that one. Nice. Hey. All right. You'll have yourselves a good day, not evening. Uh, peace. Bye-bye.